going to be sharing with you an interesting vision I had during prayer recently, one of several. You're having coffee with Conrad. Conrad Rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad from ConradRocks.net, Rocks of Revelation being poured out to you. Is your county represented by the National Day of Prayer this year, 2016? Please go to pray the number 4 nwms.us and like the page. It's our Northwest Mississippi National Day of Prayer Facebook page. Please like the page. And you'll notice there's a sign up button at the top of that page which take which takes you to the National Day of Prayer website where you can see if your county is represented by the National Day of Prayer this year, May 5th. If not, we are needing people in your county, every county in America, to champion the National Day of Prayer this year. We our nation is standing at a precipice. It's time for Team Jesus to rise up. They've got a lot of stuff going on this year. It's not just one day of prayer. 75-hour Bible reading sessions, 40-day prayer walk in every street in a nation. Doesn't that rock? And also adopting your street in prayer. Like I said, it's time for Team Jesus to rise up. Now, I'm going to be sharing with you a vision I had last week as I was in prayer. And, uh, It's an amazing, it's one of several, but we're going to deal with this one first because this is the first one in a sequence of several visions in prayer. This one I'm going to release with you today because it was first, and I believe it's very relevant to the church and to America. Now, in the vision, the first thing that happened is I heard a phrase. I heard a phrase from heaven, break up the fallowed ground. The phrase was, break up the fallowed ground. Then I saw a metal object that looked like, man, it was a huge, huge metal object, uh, steel. Um, It was a long, obtuse. It looked kind of like a punch press, you know, a leather punch, but it was huge. And it's kind of like a caterpillar. was somewhere in the vision, kind of out of sight, but it it was a heavenly metal beam. And this metal object, it struck the earth, and I heard a, a loud drumbeat, a loud boom, as it shook the earth. Now, as the object struck the earth, I saw the dust rise into the air, and also dead leaves uh, rise into the air, as you know, like you would expect, and then it began to settle. So, during this podcast, um, I, I prayed over this. Over the last few days, I've pondered on it, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring to the table some of the biblical, spiritual aspects to this vision. Konnichiwa. This is Stephen Barrett from Holy Fire Japan and Dynamic Church Planning International, and you're listening to Coffee with Conrad. You are digging deeper with Conrad on conradrocks.net. Now, first off, when I first started thinking about this vision, a verse came to my mind before I really got deep in prayer about it. Matthew twenty four twenty nine. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken." Now, normally we know that when something, when the will of God in heaven, it always precedes the will of God in the earth. His, his um, heavenly will is uttered from his throne. The prophets declare it. You know, surely he does nothing except he reveals it to the servants, the prophets. So something happens in the heavenly realm, and then it happens on the earth. And I've noticed that God has a way of speaking things forth, and they happen. Have you noticed that in the Bible? So God has got, he has a will in heaven, and I believe it's going to be manifest on the earth, and we need to pay attention. Notice that the dust rose and then resettled. 
we, the people, are the dust of the earth. The people are the dust of the earth. You know, from ash, from dust we, we came and from dust we will go. There's several biblical references from that. But I want to concentrate just for a minute here on the dead leaves. The dead leaves are the dead works from a dead tree. Do you understand this? The dead leaves are dead works from a dead tree. It didn't. I didn't see fruit. I saw leaves. Now, uh, Psalms 1, 1 through 6, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now, it's moving on to verse 4 here, talking about the ungodly. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Now let's look at the tree here. The tree is planted by the rivers of water. They have deep roots that always um, have access to the water from the river. They don't have to wait for the rain, and they're always fertile, right? They meditate in the law of the Lord day and night. But the dead, they have to, uh, the dead works, they're not tapped into that river. They're not tapped into the river that comes from the throne room of God. They're not 24 hours a day. They're not meditating in the law of the Lord day and night. Their works are dead. They're ungodly, right? So that's interesting. Dead leaves are from dead works from a dead tree. The righteous are like trees planted by the rivers of water who have 24-hour access to the water that comes from the throne room of God. Amen? So think about that. Pray about that today. Now, also, you know, another thing I thought of, I did a podcast. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the, uh, the link in the show notes here. But there's unexplained noises all over the planet for a few years. And a lot of people are capturing this on cameras, on YouTube. I, you can look for them. There's, a strown, there, there's strange shofar-type sounding noises all over the earth. This could be something, and, I, and I, I'm going to go ahead and include the, the link to that in the show notes. So wherever you hear this podcast, you can hear what I'm talking about. People that don't even know each other are sharing these strange sounds that have recently started happening all over the planet. So is this God blowing heavenly shofars? Is, is his will from the heaven about to be manifest on the earth? Listen to that YouTube video, and you decide. Now, I want to uh, read 2 Peter 3.10 about the great noise. And, and I was thinking about this because as this object hit the earth, I heard the noise. It was a loud noise. And uh, it didn't seem like a pleasant one, you know, like make a joyful noise. It didn't seem like that. So 2 Peter 3.10 talks about the heavens in a noise. Okay, 2 Peter 3.10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works therein shall be burnt up. So there's a noise from heaven, and I want you guys to check out, if you haven't already listened to my YouTube video about the unexplained noises in heaven, you know, from heaven all over the earth, check it out. It will be in the show notes. Now, I want to look, I kind of did it backwards. I talked about the vision, but let's talk about the phrase. The phrase, break up the fallowed ground. Amen? We're going to talk about that after this. Thank you for visiting ConradRocks.net. Conrad Rocks is supported by people just like you. If you've been blessed by Conrad Rocks, please 
prayerfully consider giving an offering. You can conveniently do so by using the Contribute button on the sidebar at conradrocks.net. Regular contributors get a spot on the Conrad's Comrades page, which links back to the blog or social media of your choice. You can also help Conrad Rocks by sharing your favorite posts on Facebook. Thanks again for being a part of Conrad Rocks. Remember, Jesus rules. Welcome back. Now, we're about to deal with the phrase that was the second part of the, or the first part of the vision, actually. I heard this before I saw it. And um, I heard the phrase, break up the fallowed ground. There are several scriptures that keep resonating in my spirit about this. The first one is Hosea 10, 12 through 14. You remember Hosea is the prophet that married the, the prostitute, you know, and uh, he had to deal with unfaithful Israel. His life was living out unfaithful Israel. So the verse 10, chapter 10, 12 through 14 comes to mind here. Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground. Now, this is something that we're supposed to do. We're supposed to sow to ourselves. This is a proactive thing that we do as individuals and collectively. Then he says, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. You have plowed wickedness. You have reaped iniquity. You have eaten the fruit of lies because thou didst trust in thy way in the multitude of thy mighty men. Therefore shall a tumult arise among the people, and all the fortress shall be spoiled, as Shalman spoiled Beth Arbel in the day of battle. The mother was dashed in pieces upon her children. So God here is telling Hosea, and I believe today, break up the fallow ground. This is a message, a rhema quickened word, From Hosea, catapulted to us today, this is a quickened word for the church in America, sow to ourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy. Now, what have we been doing? We have been plowing in wickedness, abortion, murder. I mean, look at all the wickedness that we're doing in America. This is why the National Day of Prayer really wants you guys to get on board with that. We need to do the prayer walks. We need to do the Bible readings at at the courthouses. We need to really take back America. And this is not something that we can do by continuing to uh, plow in wickedness and sow in wickedness because we're reaping iniquity. We need to break up our fallow ground, seek the Lord, and sow in righteousness. Now, the next passage I want to read to you is from the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah had an unpopular prophecy. He was prophesying to the king of Israel saying, hey, if you guys don't repent, if you don't repent, the king of Babylon is going to, you know, you're going to be subject to the king of Babylon. He was not popular. However, he was telling the truth. He was speaking from the heavenly realm of God. He was declaring and decreeing what the Lord had said. However, the people weren't listening. Jeremiah 4, 1 through 9. If thou wilt return, O Israel, said the Lord, return unto me, and if thou wilt put away thine abominations out of my sight... Then shalt thou not remove. This is like America today. There's so many abominations that we're just doing openly in the sight of the Lord. Amen? So we need to pay attention to this passage. These passages, the references will be in the show notes. So, you know, if you can't take notes right now, they will be in the show notes. So you can write them down later. Verse 2. And shalt thou swear, the Lord liveth in truth and judgment and in righteousness, and the nations shall bless themselves in him, and in him shall they glory. For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground, and sow not among thorns. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord. Sounds kind of like Hosea, doesn't it? It says, Take away the foreskins of your heart, ye men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire, and burn that none can quench it, because of the evil of your doings. Declare ye in Judah, and publish in Jerusalem, and say, Blow ye the trumpet in the land. Uh Uh-oh, there's that heavenly sound. You know, blow the trumpet in the land. Cry, gather together. These are proactive things the Lord is telling us to do. We are to blow the trumpet in the land, not sit on the couch and complain over the Internet. This is something we're we're supposed to proactively do. I believe this is a quickened word for the church in America, probably even the world. Declare ye in Judah... 
and publish in Jerusalem and say, Blow ye the trumpet in the land, cry, gather together and say, Assemble yourselves and let us go into the defense cities. Set up the standard towards Zion. Retire, stay not. You know, that appeal to heaven flag is a big thing right now. The As One movement, the National Day of Prayer, we need, you know, I believe they're heralding this message. And this is a time, we're at a precipice in our nation's history. We, it's time for Team Jesus to rise up. Continuing on here, this is how serious the Lord is. Um, verse 7, the line has come up from his thicket, and the destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. He's gone forth from his place to make thy land desolate. You know, Second Chronicles 7.14, heal thy land. Or you see what I'm saying? They're coming to make the land desolate, is what God is saying here through Jeremiah. And thy city shall be laid waste without an inhabitant. For this, gird you with sackcloth, sackcloth, lament and howl, for the fierce anger of the Lord is not turned back from us. And it shall come to pass at that day, saith the Lord, that the heart of the king shall perish, and the heart of the princes and the priests shall be astonished, and the prophets shall wonder. So, you know, the, these are two passages that I read that echo the phrase I heard last week of break up the fallow ground. And uh, now... Why are we breaking up the fallow ground? In the New Testament, Jesus talks about the sower sows the word. When we break up the fallow ground, when we move, remove the rocks, we remove the weeds and all that, fallow basically means land that is left unseeded or uncultivated. It's not in use, it's inactive. So we go to the New Testament and we see that Jesus is talking inadvertently about different types of soil when the sower sows the word. And I believe that that has a lot to do with where we are right now. We need to start over. We need to plow the land. We've been we've been letting it loose and letting the wild stuff run, just not taking care of our field. We need to pray the Lord of the harvest sends labors into the harvest. We've been sitting here just letting weeds and stuff grow in America for about 50 years. Amen? So Mark 4, 3 through 20, and you're going to see how different types of soil um, are important in that this is our job. We're the laborers. We don't labor by sitting on the couch. Mark 4, verse 3. Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. Now, this is, pay attention to the types of soil so we know that how we can be effective when we sow the word out on the streets, when we sow the word in our neighborhoods, when we sow the word to the Spirit and in our cities and in our government buildings like courthouses and state capitals and so forth. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. You're going to see in a second that this is spiritual warfare. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. That's the fallowed ground, right? But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Right? Fallowed ground. Some fell among thorns, more fallow ground. And the thorns grew up, and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground. Now, this is the difference between bad ground and good ground. Other other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and bought forth some thirty, some sixty, and some a hundred. And he said unto them, He that have ears to hear, let him hear. Verse 10, And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked him of the parable. And he said unto them, Unto you it's given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. See, these are kingdom keys here. The mystery is in heaven. You and I are supposed to tap into this, like rivers, you know, oak trees of righteousness. We're tapping in to this spiritual revelation that God is flowing from the throne. This is me and you, okay? We're supposed to take this mystery and manifest it on the earth here. Here's what he's doing. When we get a vision, you know, he's given us a kingdom key. We need to pay attention, not only pay attention and go, oh, look at this great prophetic word. We need to do something with it. These are keys that are supposed to use in locks. Amen? Unto you it's given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without all these things are done in parables. That seeing they may see and not perceive, they don't have the keys, they're not kingdom kids, right? And, per uh, and not perceive and hearing they may hear and not understand lest at any time they should be converted. See, this is what happens. When you hear and understand, you're converted. Do you understand that? And their sins should be forgiven them. When you understand the kingdom keys, you are converted, and your sins are forgiven. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable, then how will you know all parables? 
Now, the sower sows the word. That's what we're supposed to do. We hear the, he gives seed to the sower, the heavenly seed, the prophetic visions, the prophetic words that are going forth. The sower sows the word. That's what we do. We sow it. We don't just hold it in our bag. We don't keep it on our couch. We sow it in people's lives, right? And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. When they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. See, that is the fowls, right? The fowls that come and snatch the word which is in their hearts. This is what happens when we just sow the word in somebody's life and we don't disciple them later. You know, it's fallow ground. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground. You know, stony ground is the fallow ground. It hasn't been cultivated. It's what America's like right now. Just wicked stuff growing up everywhere. Uh, who are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves. This is another fruit of non-discipleship. Uh, they, they're, you know, we need to, once we give them the word, um, the idea is to get them into a group of believers for discipling. And so endure, but after a time, after when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they're offended. Now I want you to understand something. This is very prevalent in the in the church today, uh, a lot of people are persecuted by the world for the word's sake, and they're offended and they fall away. And these are they which were sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches. Doesn't this just sound like fallow ground? <laughs> I mean, doesn't this just sound like America? And the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things entering in, choke the word and becomes unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. This is why it's important to engage in our neighborhoods, in our communities, in our cities, on our social media. Um, we can't be silent. You know, when we sow the word, the, the Heavenly Father gives us the word to sow. We're supposed to speak it forth, not keep it silent. Now, we need to, to deal with the roots. We need to deal with the roots, uproot them. We need to get the rocks out of the way, and then we need to plow. Amen? So let's pray the Lord of the harvest sends laborers into his harvest. Now, tomorrow I'm going to be talking about another vision that I received. It's going to be about a large billow of air and how it relates to what we're doing today. God bless you. Now, remember, uh, if you're not signed up for the National Day of Prayer, please go. The link will be in the show notes. Pray the number for nwms.us. Please like the Facebook page there, and you'll notice at the sign-up button, you can click that. It will take you to the National Day of Prayer website, to the exact page where you can see if your county's already represented by the National Day of Prayer. If it's not, we need people in your county to champion this cause. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being in my life. Remember to share this podcast with your friends. Remember to rate it wherever you hear it, and remember to that there's a support page. You can support at conradrocks.net. God bless you. Till we meet again, dig deeper and go higher. Dig deeper, go higher at conradrocks.net.